Meteor is finally back with the Indigo Disc DLC. The little Meteor has become a forgotten Pokemon due to not making it in the Pokedex in a game since Gen 7. It's literally never been on the Switch. But it has some insanely cool tech and can be an absolute beast. Here's how it works. With its Shield's Down ability, it effectively has two forms. In its Meteor form, it has base 100 in both defenses and 60 speed. But when Shield's Down activates when it drops below half health, it changes to Core form. Attack Mode Minior now switches its defenses with its attack stats, and also gets an amazing 120 base speed. It can take advantage of Meteor Form by using its defenses to take an attack, then going for Shell Smash to double both its attack and speed. This then activates Shields down to Core Form. This allows us to do some crazy damage with Stab Acrobatics. Acrobatics is a 55 power flying move that doubles to 110 when the user has no held item. We bring Acrobatics to full power by using up the White Herb item that also brings defenses back to normal, and with coverage with Earthquake and Stone Edge, the little meteor is ready to be a menace. Ladies and gentlemen, the last time we were able to use a Minior was when it was on the 3DS. And this little dude is overdue to show the true power. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I plan on using all the returning Pokemon on the channel. And if you're already this far, you might as well click the button. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Golden Go. I decided to toss out the Flygon because Goggles is absolutely amazing. I got the Choice Scarf Flygon, I'm able to outspeed pretty much their entire team. And I figured they probably don't want to leave this thing in here. There's, you know, there's a chance they end up staying in and go for something like a trick. However, this dude's team is very scary and I want to try to grab myself a nice little switch initiative as early as I can to get some momentum. So, they decide to switch into the Ting Lu, but he's got a bowl on his head, and we are trying to eat some cereal out of that. So I get a U-turn off, which is actually nice because we can get some solid chip, and then also figure out ourselves a nice little matchup. So I decide to go into the Skarmory. This thing is essentially here to help me out with hazards, can try to punish some switches as much as possible by laying down some layers of spikes. I've got the Stealth Rock, and this is also a Body Press set. So. I imagine old Stanley Cup over here probably wants to stay in and set up the Stealth Rock of their own, so I'm just going to lay down a layer of spikes as they do actually just end up staying in here, and I really could use some chip on this. If there's any Pokemon that stop my like, sweepers, it's, it's going to be something like the Ting Lu, as they do take the opportunity to lay down the Stealth Rock, and while I do have the Hazard Control in the form of the Rapid Spin on my Hitmon top, they have a nice little answer on a switch in which is going to be the ghost type golden go. So we have a little bit of an interesting matchup here as I can't really start to set up the iron defense and then body press with the Skarmory because of course they have the ghost type in the back and here I decide I'm actually just going to switch directly into the Hitmon top. What that's going to do is it's going to give me a nice little opportunity to grab an intimidate here. I can scare this thing out with both uh, close combat and then also the threat of the rapid spin so I get that intimidate as they're just gonna lay down a layer of spikes of their own and the the Legos are starting to stack up over here I really want to try to limit the, the hazards because the name of the game is gonna be trying to get some momentum a lot of my team does rely on setup and so Hitmon top being out here does kind of put the the Ting Lu in an awkward spot I can't really go for the close combat I also can't go for the rapid spin because I am predicting them to go directly into the golden go so to combat that, I'm actually just going to switch directly back into Flygon. That's going to cover for potential Earthquake from Ting Lu, but also, if they switch into the Golden Go, I now have a faster Earthquake against them. So, they do actually make the switch that I predict. They're going to go directly back into that Golden Go. This thing is essentially a spin blocker here. It's going to take a little bit of spikes damage, and at this point, I'm free to just click a nice little stab Earthquake. Flygon it's actually looking really nice in this matchup, both for pivots and just for decent Earthquake damage here. And they cannot risk the Golden Go just going down to an Earthquake, so they decide to switch into the Elon Tusk. Uh, Great Tusk comes in here, and I get some solid damage on the Earthquake. Well, this thing is pretty defensive, it's looking like a 3-hit KO, but I also know the Great Tusk definitely wants to stay in and just go for a Rapid Spin. Plus, Flygon can take anything this throws at me, so I just decide to stay in and go for another Earthquake. And while they do rapid spin away my hazards, they're also going to get themselves a nice little plus one in speed. However, since I am Choice Scarf, I know that I'm still going to outspeed and I can finish it with an Earthquake. So, this thing being down is actually really nice for me. It's a good defensive switch in for them. And also, more importantly, they no longer have the ability to kind of get rid of the hazards with a rapid spin. So, that's going to be the good news. The bad news is, I can't do jack shit to this crazy ass golden apple, and I do have to switch out the Flygon. I definitely want those... Fast Earthquakes for later, and I decide, you know what, I'm just going to bring in Beyblade here. I figure I have Assault Vest, I know that I can take attacks from this thing relatively easily, and then I can also do some solid damage 
with a triple axle. Four times weak, it probably grabs a KO. I intimidate it for absolutely no reason, and then they actually make a switch of their own, and they try to grab a position by going back into their golden go. So this is not ideal for me. It comes in for free, of course, no punish, because of the fact they got the rapid spin. I can't rapid spin myself, and I figure the only play I can do here is really going to Blaziken. Now, it's actually not horrible, because I bring in Blaziken on a potential make it rain or a shadow ball, either of which I know I can take an attack, and then grab myself a speed boost and potentially threaten stuff out, you know, with a, a flare blitz. So, Blaziken comes in looking as spicy as hell as I do take a shadow ball, but just barely. Um, so I do need one turn to be able to get that uh, that speed boost to activate. So I'm gonna go for the protect here. Also, just kind of scout out what this Golden Go wants to do. It does just stay in, throw some balls at me, and uh, Blaziken is not having that because. Now we are fast as fuck, boy. I get that speed boost, and this puts me in a spot where Blaziken definitely outspeeds, and I do a kill with a Flare Blitz, which is my only option. However, it turns out, Buddy is wearing a Choice Scarf. This thing is gonna be able to outspeed me even after plus one, and that is gonna be a massive bummer. It's mostly just because the thing is plus speed nature with the Choice Scarf. It, it's literally like four base points faster than me. So Blaziken goes down for no reason. However, I do now know that this thing is Choice Scarf. So that's actually, it's super good intel moving forward in the match. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to switch into the Iron Boulder. He's actually not a boulder, he's a rock, and the Pioneers used to drive these babies for miles. But I'm able to activate the Quark Drive through the booster energy, get a nice little speed boost. I can outspeed this thing and hit it with an Earthquake and then he's dead. But this little Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Applejack's mascot bastard is able to live and then fires off a super effective Shadow Ball, and that takes care of my Iron Boulder. So that's literally insane. I for sure thought that Earthquake was going to take care of it, and now I find myself just more and more angry at this little Golden Bastard. So <laughs> the only thing I can really do here is go into Flygon. We're both Choice Scarf, but I'm much faster, so I know that I can definitely be able to take care of this thing. And I also know that they know how important this Golden Go is. So instead of going for the obvious Earthquake to take care of it, I'm actually just going to U-turn because that's going to grab me some momentum. They do switch and they decide to bring in the Ting Lu once again. Ting Lu's out here just soaking up U-turns all damn day with his big ass forehead. And that is going to do some meaningful chip at least. And give me a nice little matchup to where I decide to go. I'm thinking I can bring back and hit him on top. They know that I want to rapid spin away these hazards so damn badly. But I also know that that Golden Go is hanging on by a damn thread over there. So if I can just get some, a little bit of damage on that thing, Golden Go is going to be taken care of, and then I'll be in a much better spot. Uh, at this point, my end game is trying to figure out a position to bring in Minior, because with Acrobatics and Earthquake coverage, I'm looking like I have the ability to pretty much knock out their entire team, but it all comes down to whether or not I can bring that in. So, they want to switch out the Ting Lu on the threat of a close combat or a rapid spin, so they go into the Golden Go. We know that thing is coming in, so I can just triple axle, give him a little spin -a -roo, and that is going to knock out <laughs> the Golden Go. So that's an annoying Asmon out of the way, and there is just nothing but threats all around. And speaking of threats, you just have to deal with the damn another one, which is going to be the Metagross. And of course, there is an absolute shit ton of things that this can do. I'm imagining, worst case scenario, they go for something like a Trailblaze, get a speed boost, and a couple of those, it starts to get really scary. So I'm just gonna stay and go for the close combat, as instead they actually just go right for the Psychic Fang. So that takes care of Hitmontop, and while I wasn't able to spin away the hazard, at least we're able to take care of the Golden Go, and that's gonna open back up the door for the Flygon. So Young Goggles coming back in for free is super nice. I have a nice little stab earthquake. I know that I can outspeed, and it really comes down to whether or not I can grab a kill with this Earthquake. Flygon is super important for this late game, but I'm kind of running out of options at this point. I go for the Earthquake, and fucking Xbox 360 does not get the Red Ring of Death, and it straight up lives. It's able to fire off another Psychic Fangs, and that takes care of the Flygon. So, I've done everything I can at this point, and I've set myself up actually relatively close to being able to get this Minior to pop off for me, and basically come in extremely clutch. But first, I need to go into the Skarmory. Now, the reason is, I know that I can take attacks pretty much all day from this Metagross. I can essentially set up all the hazards that I need, and the four Pokemon they have in the back are not going to enjoy having to switch into that. So, the Metagross realizes it essentially has no business dealing with the Skarmory, and they decide to go back into Hydrapple, who is still setting up full HP. This thing with Regenerator is a goddamn problem. So... Uh, I do set up a nice little layer of spikes here, and I, I really I don't have much to touch this thing, but Minior can. So 
Essentially, my plan is this. I want to use Skarmory to set up as many hazards as I humanly possibly can here. I'm going to go for a second layer of spikes, and there are all sorts of Legos scattered on over there. And essentially, I also know that Hydrapple doesn't have the greatest coverage for the flying steel type that is Skarmory. So they actually go for the Hydro Pump, which my ass had no idea that this thing could even use Hydro Pump, but it does miss because Hydro miss, that they don't call it that for no reason. So I just set up my third layer of spikes, and now you come in here barefoot, you are gonna have a bad time on the battlefield. So they do connect on this next Hydro Pump, and that does a nice little bit of damage. But honestly, what I truly need is for Skarmory to go down to the Hydrapple, and then that opens the door for the revenge switch for the Minior to come in. So at this point I figure, might as well just scatter some more shit over there. I go for the Stealth Rock, and we have full hazard set up. They of course don't have the ability to get rid of that with the Great Tusk gone, and it's looking like one more Hydro Pump is gonna take care of the Skarmory. So literally all I need to do is be able to get in this damn Meteor, and then potentially we are in a spot to sweep. So I just go for the Body Press here just to get some chip. I've obviously set up all the hazards I possibly can. They do connect on this final Hydro Pump, and that takes care of the Skarmory. However, we set ourselves up super nice. That Metagross can now no longer switch in because of all the spikes, and it is time. The little Comet dude comes in, he says, come at me, bro, and this is literally our final hope. So, I do take some Stealth Rock damage, which is unfortunate, and as they're looking at this matchup, they have a neutral Energy Ball potential, or they have the super effective Hydro Pump. So what I'm gonna do is go for the Terra Flying and then click the Shell Smash. The Terra Flying is essentially just because, I, I, in case they want to go for that Hydro Pump. Also because Minior with the little balloons on his head is literally amazing. He is essentially a balloon himself. We are now flying even higher. We put our balloons on and I go for that Shell Smash. So that's going to give me a nice little double in attack, double in speed, and even though we get those defense drops, we are going to be able to activate the White Herb, which just brings our, our stats right back to normal. So. We are truly, we could not find ourselves in a better position as they have four Pokemon left and we're down to literally just a rock. So the White Herb activates, they go for the Fickle Beam and we are able to live, which is extremely clutch. That is gonna activate the shield down and while our shields may be down, our hands are up because we are ready to start swinging out here if we had little rocky hands. But I can just go for an Acrobatics at this point and that is definitely gonna be able to take care of the Hydrapple and thank God that thing did not get the 30% chance <laughs> for the uh, the extra damage on the Fickle Beam. So, down goes Hydrapple, and we have literally a Meteor and a Dream out here. As they decide to just go into the Metagross just to check and see if Buddy can come in, he says, uh, nope, and just dies to the spikes. And that is why we <laughs> love the hazards, uh, especially in the late game here. So, now they can go into the coma O, and at this point, I'm a little bit frightened. It comes in, it takes a whole bunch of chip from both the spikes and the Stealth Rock, However, they actually have not committed their Terra at this point, and I'm thinking, if this thing is Terra Steel, I'm gonna find my little rocky ass having a bad time. If I go for the Earthquake and overpredict, I, I basically lose the game. So, I click the Acrobatics here, they are gonna commit the Terra. However, it turns out to just be Terra Dragon, which is literally amazing, because the dragon on your head may look cool, but it's not gonna save you from the fate that this Meteor is about to give you. I can go for that Acrobatics, and with the extra stab from the flying, that is definitely gonna take care of the coma O. And down goes, again, one of the biggest threats in the game. And Minior says, you are not about to shit on my birthday party, bro. Can you see these balloons? It's clearly my party out here. So the final Mon is gonna be that Ting Lu, and this thing definitely as well goes down uh, to the acrobatics, especially because all the hazards brings it down below half. And boy, does it feel good to get this goofy little rock to, uh, <laughs> become overpowered against a team like this. So I can just go for that acrobatics. However, they are in fact going to just run because you know, have you seen how scary this thing looks, especially with his balloons? Very threatening lad. So that's gonna be the end of the match. And that was honestly a super good game uh, against a talented player. And uh, Minior comes out on top, luckily. Definitely some luck involved, but you know, it is what it is. Thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.